my friends welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris in this video um, we will talk about timers um, timers basically allow you to uh, execute some action in the future so not right now um, and it's very very useful for anything that is based on time so especially enemies cutscenes um, most enemies will have some um, behavior that changes changes with time. For example, after some time, they will their movement will uh, switch to, to another direction, and maybe they will attack. Maybe they will uh, run towards the hero, uh, stuff like that. And all of this is very often based on on timers, and it's the same for cutscenes. Um, you can imagine something happening with an, an, an with an NPC, sorry, and then some the the non-playing character will talk to you about something, and then the camera will move to some location, and then some dialogue will happen, and then uh, some event on the map will happen, an explosion, anything that you want in in your cutscene, and all of these are some events that that will be executed after some time um, so how does it work let's start with a very basic example so i will create a switch here with some random sprite and let's give it a name because i will need to do some code um, timer switch okay so um, Let's have a look at the documentation. We have this page about timers here, and you, I, I recommend to um, run the to 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 yeah to see these examples. They are very very basic examples, and um, th that introduce gra gradually most of the of the features uh, of timers. But uh, I, I will explain this with with an example the main function is sol.timer.start um, it does create a timer and it returns the timer object created um, and there are three parameters context delay and callback context is optional actually it's not really optional but if you don't specify it it will be the map by default i will explain what what that means uh, but when our switch is activated we want to play a sound oops play sound for example victory uh, for now there are no timers involved so just checking that i'm able to press the button yep that works now let's do this with a timer so i'm calling that function sol.timer.start um, not specifying the context for this first first example uh, it will allow me to better explain why it is important um, let's say after three seconds so the time is in milliseconds so for, for three seconds you want to to set uh, this parameter to uh, three so th 3000 and we want to pass the code to execute later as a callback here so sol.audio.playsound victory um, it's very similar to uh, what we saw if if you already watched the tutorial about um, dialogues we had some callbacks that were so it means some code that were called uh, later after the dialogue finished so here it's quite the same principle um, just it will be executed after that delay so yeah we just pass a function object again to our uh, function call here and this function will not be executed right now it will be executed only later only after the delay so let's try one two 
three. Yay! That worked. Nice. Um, so, the context of the timer, by default, it's the map. So, when I did not specify it, it was completely equivalent to passing the map here, the map object. And that defines the, li the lifetime of your timer. Which means that if you, s if you go to another map before the end of the timer, since the map, uh, that map here, no longer exists now that I switch to another one, the timer also uh, disappeared. So we didn't hear the sound because I left the map before the delay. If I had set a context to something else uh, more global, that like the, the like the game, it would let the timer persist across maps. So I hope you hear, you heard the the difference. We just hear, uh, yeah, we just had the sound uh, this time because the context was. Uh, more global more global than just the map so again by default it's the map when a game is running because uh, when when you are not during a game for example when you are in the t title screen well by default it will be uh, sol.main which represents the uh, yeah the global object of your quest um, okay what what is important to understand is that this function just starts the timer and immediately returns. So if you put any code later, I mean any code after that function call, like let's play another sound. Um, I don't know. This will happen immediately because the function immediately returns. But it just basically lets, it just basically schedules that code to be called later, and then we can continue and do something else. So if I do that, I will hear the cane sound immediately. I just did. And now, victory. So what I mean is that this is not a blocking function, uh, it is asynchronous. Okay, um, you can read the documentation again. You have the type timer. Um, this return a value of type, so it's an object of type timer, and you can use it to, if you need more information or, or to, to set more properties, like uh, one that can be important is uh, set suspended with map. Do you want your timer to be automatically uh, paused when the game is suspended? So, for example, when the game is paused or when a dialogue is playing, by default, it's yes. Uh, for example, if, if you have an, en en an enemy uh, that shoots uh, some fireballs every second, uh, you want that <laughs> event, that uh, repeating event, uh, of shooting fireballs to be paused during the the dialogues or do it during the pause menu something like that but on the contrary if you are programming the the dialog box itself um, for instance some gradual displaying of of the letters of the letters of your dialog box you don't want that to be suspended when the game is suspended because well by definition during the dialogue the game is suspended so it really depends on on what you want on what you are doing if you read the dialog box script the default dialog dialog box script uh, it's quite complicated but i'm sure there are there are some timers if you search sol.timer.start so it's it's exactly what what i was talking about um if we are uh, showing the letters gradually, then we use a timer. Also, we, we are playing a sound uh, every, uh, I don't know, some delay, it doesn't matter. 
you can read the code of any enemy even if we haven't seen uh, enemies yet precisely i wanted to talk about timers first because enemies use a lot of timers uh, if you look for any enemy we have multiple sol.timer.start calls here um okay but let's get back to our basic example here um let's say that we want the timer to repeat and there is an easy way to do that um and that easy way is to return oops some value or to return whether or not you want to repeat so if you return true it will just repeat um, and it will repeat with the same delay so let's make it shorter so here it will repeat forever I mean while, while the game is running even if I'm switching to another map so I think that's enough <laughs> you get the point if you return false or nothing it will not repeat if you return true it will repeat you can also return uh, some integer value and that will be your new delay um, it's explained here in your callback parameter you need to pass a function and depending on on what your function return it will it, this is exactly what I was explaining if you return true timer will repeat with the same delay if it returns some integer value it will repeat after the new delay otherwise otherwise it will not repeat at all um, okay let's say we want to repeat uh, three times but with the same delay don't want to over complicate this small short introduction um, let's count how many times we played the sound and let's say that after three times we we want to return false so what we can do is return this the result of the, this this boolean expression here so when num sounds will reach three the timer will stop repeating one two three and yeah it works cool okay so this pattern of, of repeating a timer a specific number of times is often used with enemies again let's say that you have an enemy that will shoot uh, three fireballs um, and each separated with some delay it's a perfect example of this um, okay let's finish with a slightly more interesting example back to our map here the other map uh, in a previous tutorial it doesn't really matter if you haven't if you have not seen it we had a switch to make uh, appear a chest let's say that after some delay the chest the treasure chest disappears um, so how to do that it's quite simple this is the code of activating the activating the switch we play the sound chest appears we enable the chest and we want to schedule a timer with the context should be the map let's say that after three seconds we want the chest to disappear again because we don't we don't want our game to be too easy so how to how do you do that you create a timer and you pass some function that will do set enabled false on the treasure chest and that's almost it we also want the switch to be uh, deactivated again so that we can try again so it's a very simple timer one 
two, three. Okay, that was re three really fast seconds to me. But <laughs> anyway, it works. And if I open the chest, oops, this feels a little bit weird that the chest still disappears. So maybe we could do some condition like if we want to do that only if the chest is still not open. If not tunic chest is open, then this. And it works after three seconds. Not only I'm very cute with this uh, sprite, but the treasure chest is still here. Cool. Um, okay, I think that's enough for this short introduction uh, about timers. Um, you will use them a lot again in your quest. They are they are useful in all situations. <laughs> in maps, if in enemy scripts, in cutscenes, title screens, and as soon as you have anything happening, <laughs> really. Um, so I, I hope that was understandable enough, and feel free to join our Discord to um, ask questions and to help others. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time. Bye.